everybody. Today we're here in beautiful Orlando, Florida at the SoulQuest Ayahuasca Church of Mother Earth. Yeah, that's a handful. And while I get my bag, why don't we go ahead and teach you what ayahuasca is. Hello, my name is Christopher Young. I'm the founder of SoulQuest Ayahuasca Church of Mother Earth here in Orlando, Florida. We have been here for three years. Um, currently we're looking to be the third legal ayahuasca church in the United States. Um, we have filed a DEA exemption to the DEA to become the third legal ayahuasca church. Um, there are only two other churches in the United States currently that are legal to hold ceremonial space for ayahuasca. One is Santo Daime and one is UDV. In 1996, the UDV won a Supreme Court case providing that they were able to use ayahuasca as a spiritual sacrament. Shortly thereafter, Santo Daime piggybacked off that same uh, ruling, was able to get an exemption to be able to use ayahuasca for its uh, religious use as well. Um, we have great hopes that in the end that we will be the third place to be able to use this here in the United States and to be able to bring it to uh, a wider variety of our members uh, that are throughout the United States instead of right here in Orlando, Florida. Um, let's talk a little bit about what actually ayahuasca is. Ayahuasca are two plants. One it is from a vine, it's called ayahuasca or bee cappy, and the other one is from a leaf called chacruna. Um, these two are combined, which actually creates the synergy of ayahuasca. The DMT actually comes from the chacruna. Um, it is a very subtle thing that's within every living life force that exists here on this planet. Um, sometimes it's hard to uh, be able to get to this part of our body is because we have something called an MEO blocker and we have to be able to block the MEO enzyme to be able to have this medicine work within our own body. What, hap what hap actually happens with this is we have the ayahuasca which provides that MEO inhibitor which will allow the DMT to actually work within the body. Um, that's why normally as humans we are not able to access it unless that's actually blocked. Um, through a ceremonial tea you're able to access that medicine and you're able to access the DMT within your own body and this DMT will allow it to go in the body and to be able to help with certain types of ailments such as trauma, um, trauma from PTSD, trauma from any type of mental, physical abuse that someone has dealt with as a child, maybe mommy daddy issues. It's a kind of a thing that it works in a way of therapy. Um, but a lot of people talk about ayahuasca as maybe 30 years of psychotherapy in one weekend. And this is kind of true. It really gets deep down into what actually is bothering someone and it helps them process it. This is very important because sometimes people don't know how to deal with the trauma that they've experienced, especially military veterans with PTSD. Um, we work hand in hand with veterans. Uh, we specialize with veterans with PTSD. Um, we actually did a film called From Shock to Awe about two years ago. And in this film, we met two veterans that were severely uh, dealing with a tough bout of PTSD. Um, they were heavily medicated through the VA. Um, we filmed them as they were on the medications of the VA. We filmed them as they got off the medications of the VA. Then we also filmed them as they came here to the retreat. And after consuming the ayahuasca and actually how it transformed them within 24 hours, all that time that they suffered, and they suffered greatly, all they needed to do was have a little bit of ayahuasca to help them overcome a lot of the issues that they dealt with for many years. Um, this is not just for uh, military veterans with PTSD, it's for anyone that suffers from trauma. It's anyone that suffers from loss of purpose or anyone who suffers from finding their way. Um, this medicine is very spiritual. It is a way to be able to connect with a person on a spiritual level and be able to talk to your higher self. Ayahuasca is our spirit and it's what we bring her here to be able to learn from her. And the way we're able to do that is to communing through the ayahuasca tea. And when we commune with her, she heals us, she helps us, she guides us, she loves us. And that is something that um, you can't get from too many things. And so I'm grateful to be able to have the opportunity to, to provide ayahuasca here to our church members. And I'm grateful that ayahuasca has found me 
and be able to bring this church here to the United States, to be able to spread the word, spread the love to each and every person out there that is looking for that type of healing. Ayahuasca is not for everyone, but everyone will try to seek out for that help. The people that have a little bit more difficulty with ayahuasca are people who suffer from bipolar, schizophrenia, or epilepsy. We're not here to say you're not able to take the medicine at this time, but we do believe future, in the future it might happen. So don't lose hope for those of you that are not able to take the medicine. We do believe there will be a route some way, somehow, someday. Thank you, and you all have a blessed day. All right, guys, so that's what ayahuasca is all about. This should be a pretty enlightening weekend as I'm literally going to be drinking the Kool-Aid. So we'll see how all this goes. I really don't know what to expect, but I've definitely got my mind as open as possible for it. And uh, I guess we'll talk again on Sunday. Well, I was wondering how your weekend went. I uh, I gotta say, man, they, this has been an incredibly enlightening experience. It's way more than I would have ever expected when I found everything online and was you know just coming to learn about it, being here and experiencing it. it like, yeah, I'm generally pretty good with words, but I still get kind of lost. With it. Yeah. What do you think about the property? The property is gorgeous. Uh, it's really unassuming from out front. But like when you're here, you feel like welcome, and it, it, it's kind of a warm feeling just being in here. How did you feel about meeting 25 complete strangers oh, and uh, man, putting like, yourself I in that vulnerable position? You know, it's um, you know it's, it's something else. Yeah. That's for sure. I, I at the beginning, I really felt like I was gonna, you know, be kind of held back. But the vibe here just it makes you want to share and talk things through. And, So you would say that you actually met some pretty cool people? I think I met some people that I'm hoping that I, I can maintain some kind of a relationship with into the future. Yeah. I, I mean, we've all, we all went through something pretty serious. Yeah. And I, I yeah, I, I, I think that kind of thing is going to, you know, form bonds. Well, let's talk about your ayahuasca experience. How was that? Um, I think the easiest thing for me to do is like when we got done with day ceremony, I actually spent a little bit of time writing that, uh, what everything was, and if you don't mind, yeah, I'll go ahead and read that, that. Yeah. So, pull it up real quick. It's, um, it's not the shortest thing that I've ever written, but, <laughs> let's see here, so, <laughs> well, Purging is, uh, this is kind of in a note format, so this first thing that I had to say here was uh, purging is some of the hardest puking I think I've ever done in my life. I, I can only imagine it just means that I had that much more to release. But when things started happening, it was uh, closing my eyes and being taken over by colors. Was starting out in the most vivid of reds, transitioning to all the warm colors of the spectrum. That was run a mix with every sacred geometry pattern that I had ever seen in my life, kind of just swishing back and forth in with the colors. And honestly, the colors were so bright that India's Holly Festival would have been paled in comparison to it. It was, I've never seen things that vivid of tone. And I mean, coming as being a graphic artist and everything, I play with colors all the time and it was amazing, the vividness of everything. And that's when a figure appeared down by my feet and it kind of slithered up my body like it was a snake. And when it got to my chest, it presented herself as being a woman and blowing a cool warmth as if she was literally breathing love onto me. And then suddenly she just vanished. It was like she came up and just up and poof. And at that point it brought me back into the sacred geometry but this time it wasn't only in the bright warm reds and yellows and oranges. This time it brought blues and greens into the mix. And it was a cool and just, it was there in calming at that point. Or as the warms and the reds and everything kind of got me excited. After she came through and everything, it, like, it brought me 
back down to that place. Then <laughs> there was an intense and painful need to purge and purge again. And only to take a 30 second reprieve to go right back to some more violent purging. <laughs> there was a feeling of panic and I needed to remove myself from the ceremony grounds to find my space and kind of ground myself again. And after walking with the facilitator for a minute, we returned to the group. That time was when I tried the rapé. And it, honestly, the best way that I can describe that is it felt like somebody just blew my face open. And it was an intense feeling, but it was like the fog had just been cleared. I could start to see again and think again and everything. And of course, that was followed by a little bit more purging. And then after that purge, and the mucus was coincidentally done flowing from my face, it sent like somebody had hooked me up to a car battery. Every inch of my body felt like the most intense pins and needles that you've ever felt from like when your foot falls asleep. And it honestly had me just sitting there thinking, what the fuck is happening? But I appreciated the energy and felt kind of a renewal that came along with it. The intensity is hard to match with words, but then as it started to become a bit too much, I was greeted by one of the cats on property much like it was intentionally coming to check on me. And since I had asked Mother Ayahuasca to help me go and become closer to nature, I took it as a great sign and even though I don't really care that much for cats, I found a level of inner peace by making friends with this one. Finally, finally the violent illness had subsided and I found myself taking child's pose with both my heads grasped over my hands, centering myself even further. I was coming back into my body and myself I laid face down with my head with, I laid face down with my head facing to the left and couldn't help but stare into my tattoo. It's, it's pretty much the whole left side of my body right there. And with that, I found a much deeper spiritual connection to the meanings of my tattoo as it, it very much pertains to my life. And it may be Maori tribal, but there's something that obviously is a, a no mix indigenous. with all tribal medicine and indigenous medicine in general. I was compelled to do a few chaturangas, and this must have unblocked some negative energy. And I've never been the one really for like the whole crystals thing and all that, but for some reason I felt at that time that a crystal was going to help me dissipate that negative energy. Mm -hmm. And that's when Kim actually brought me over a piece of selenite, which and then told me that it was the crystal that was really used to charge other crystals and it, that it comes from the ocean and with me being such a water baby it was like it was meant for me like I, I recharge at the ocean as it is mm -hmm. and it was like earth was bringing me the ocean since I couldn't be there at that point my journey was pretty much ending and I pretty I, I laid there writing about the experience for all of you to hear ayahuasca is, this always makes me choke up every time I've heard this that ayahuasca has earned a special place in my heart, and I implore you all to take a trip yourself. It may have taken me 37 years, but as I write this, and even right now, I can say that I understand what tears of joy are. I want to thank you for coming out here and having that time to be able to spread the message of what ayahuasca is and what ayahuasca is meant to do for this planet. Um, it is here to save humanity. Right. Person at a time. I can only imagine. Yeah. And that's what it's doing. Uh, we've been here for three years. Uh, we're not going anywhere. We have over 7,000 members. We currently hold three ceremonies a month with about 25 to 30 people. Um, we're working on the DEA exemption to be in the third legal ayahuasca church in the United States. And we're looking good at that right now. That's awesome. We're happy to be able to bring this medicine to as many people that we can. A lot of people can't afford to fly to Peru and spend three to five thousand dollars. Here they can come with a small donation and be able to have a whole weekend, not just a ayahuasca, but a healing. It is. It definitely is. What do you think, like my experience, means? And can you help me kind of pull that yeah, together I mean, a little bit? That first part was an introduction. She was here just to introduce herself. Okay. Ayahuasca is not meant to have a one-time journey. Right. It's meant to learn to journey with the mind, the body, and the soul. So she just basically gave you a little glimpse of what is. Okay. Now it's your job to learn to journey with the medicine. And the more you journey it, the deeper you'll go. 
It treats everyone like an onion. It peels one layer at a time. Sometimes your journeys are going to be beautiful. Sometimes they're going to be tough. Sometimes it goes and pulls down childhood trauma. Uh, people who suffer from massive physical, emotional abuse, or people who have been raped, or people who suffer from PTSD from war. It goes and it pulls those difficult traumas out and brings them to the surface and it helps them deal with it so they no longer have to suffer in that pain anymore. And that is the, the magic of It's definitely made a difference for me, and Chris, I can only thank you for letting me come out this weekend, and I, I it's, yeah, you're going to see more of me. Well, I really appreciate it. Thank you, brother. Thank you. So it's been about three months now since I went to Soul Quest and had my adventure with Ayahuasca, and I got to say, it was easily one of the top three most emotional things that I've done in my life. Three months later, you know, things have calmed down. I'm a little bit back to normal. I'm no longer a crying emotional mess like I was at the end of that weekend. But one thing I can promise you is that ayahuasca does a lot of great things for people. And until you've done it yourself, you just, you really can't understand what it is. And it's really hard to explain, but you do feel better. I totally understand what Chris was saying, that it's something that you need to go back and do over and over to really be able to feel the tool out and get everything that you can out of it. It's uh, starting to feel like it's kind of time for a recharge myself, but I think I might wait until things cool down a little bit. For you though, I highly recommend heading out and seeing what Chris and everybody at Soul Quest are doing. It can help you, without a doubt. I'll see you guys next time.